You know when someone plays something on the guitar and it sounds so cool, but when you play it, it just sounds bleh. I mean, what is the difference? You might be playing the right notes, you might be playing the rhythm correct, but it's just not Jimmy, or Jimmy, or King, or King. The reason is because we have to play with feel or expression. Now, you could use an expression pedal, but that's not what I'm talking about. If you can't make your guitar sing without pedals, then it's time to learn a few tricks from the Jimmies and the Kings. The guitar is actually a very expressive instrument, and as my buddy George says, we have a very direct connection to the sound that the instrument makes. Every little thing that our fingers do changes that sound for better or boring. For example, let's take a simple lick that has a, a decent call and response phrase to it, but is otherwise really lacking in feel. And now step by step, adding just one thing at a time, we're gonna alter this lick so it goes from boring to cool. And before we do, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe because it helps other people find this channel and then we can make lots more videos. The first thing that I find is boring about this lick because it starts right on beat one. Now I'm not saying we should never start on beat one, but you know, we could spice it up easily by adding a little anticipation. Anticipation means that we just start the lick a little bit early, like on the end of four, right before our solo is supposed to start. Then it sounds like this train just can't wait to get out of the station. And now just to make that start even more interesting, let's slide into the whole lick. Starting with the slide is a very simple thing you can do to any lick just to make it sound a little more interesting. And now we're really gonna get into it because we're gonna add accents. Accents are a way of adding dynamics to a lick. We can play all the notes exactly the same volume, but that wouldn't be very interesting, would it? We can play some of the notes louder, and we can play some of the notes quieter, and that's how we speak as humans, right? We want to try to emulate telling a story. So some words, or some notes in this case, we're gonna hit just a bit harder. So let's accent beats two and three in that first measure there. Now, whenever we have a longer note, we could easily just add some vibrato to it. It just makes that little more human sounding, like a singer would sing. When Often when singers are holding onto a note, they add a little bit of, or a lot of vibrato. How much vibrato you add is kind of up to you. That's a personal taste. I generally just like a little bit. That's just my style, I guess. Now talking about that direct connection that we have to the sound of this instrument, we can take any of these notes and just alter them ever so slightly. I really like to do this on a minor third. In this case, that would be the first finger there, and we can make it just the tiniest of bends. It goes like a quarter step. I mean, it doesn't even really matter the pitch because the pitch is not gonna be in key. It's not even really a note that exists. But again, if you think about the way we talk, we're not talking with auto-tune here, are we? Our voices aren't following the grid precisely, and so that's why some of our notes maybe shouldn't either. So you can just make that a very small first finger bend. Now we have some other bends in this look already, but they don't all need to be the same, especially this note here, which is what I often call our favorite bend, right? And why is that our favorite bend? Not only because it's a very common note to bend, but also because we could bend it a whole step or a half step. If we bend it a half step, then it goes to the sound of the blue note. So let's make the last time we bend that note just a half step up to the blue note.
So now let's talk about articulations. Articulations could be accents like we already did, or they could be what's called staccato. Staccato means that we're going to play the note, but we're going to cut it really short. That means it's like played and then silent right after. And we can do that just by stopping the note quickly with our right hand or just by putting the pick back on the string, which is often the way we would do it. We're going to put those staccato notes right there, and that's going to make that part just sound a lot more interesting. Now to get an even more dynamic, kind of more human feeling to it, we're going to add what some people call a ghost note. It's a bit like when we're speaking and we go, hmm, um, and then we continue on with our sentence. It's like that. I'm going to add just one little note in the middle of the lick, and we're going to play it real quiet. It's just barely there. Sometimes you won't even really notice these ghost notes unless you listen to solos by Santana specifically. And you hear, oh wait, there's a note in there. You'll find them in the tabs and you go, I never noticed that note before. And you listen to the song again and you go, wow, where'd that note come from? It's always been there. They are a really cool way of adding just that very subtle, very natural expressiveness to a phrase. And keep in mind that a ghost note is sometimes a note and sometimes it's just a little sound. Sometimes it's an intentional little click sound that we can get by just dulling the note and just hitting it there. Then it's even more subtle, but it's still cool. Now we are almost done. One of the things that I notice about the lick in its original form is it doesn't really seem to end anywhere in particular. Now let's pretend it's going to end on the one chord. So we might want to think of a target note. You could even argue that the beginning of the lick and the end of the lick are maybe the most important. They're the parts that people really notice, right? They notice when it starts, they're really going to notice the ending of it. So we want to make that count. And one way to do that is just to choose a target note. It could be something really clever or it could be just something quite simple. We could just target the root. So that just goes to the E in this case. Or we could use the fifth of the key because the fifth is going to sound good on the one chord as well. Why is that? Because the one chord has a root third fifth. It has that note in it. Or maybe the song is actually going to the five chord and that fifth is going to sound good on that as well. In fact, there's, there's a bunch of options there. But here's what ending on the fifth sounds like. Now I think it's almost there, I just want to do one last thing, and that is that I'm going to move that last note. It's still going to be the fifth, but I'm going to put it on a different string, and we're going to slide up to it. And that slide up at the end is going to be like the cherry on top. So let's hear the before and the after. Here's the before. Yeah, and now the after. Now that's a lot of different techniques added to just one simple lick. And you can see that how if you took these different techniques and put them in different beats or different notes of this same lick, it would sound quite different. That's where our own personal expressiveness comes from, where we choose to put the accents, or when we use staccato, or how hard we bend, or where we put micro bends, or what tones we target at the end. All of these things are what make us sound like ourselves. And coming up on Patreon, we're going to have lots more exercises diving deep into each of these things like accents and staccato and first finger bends. And you can get seven days for free on Patreon, as I always say in these videos. And if you haven't signed up yet, or at least tried the seven days for free, how come? I don't know, because you got nothing to lose. My name is Blue Morris, and I teach guitar right here in Vancouver and on Patreon. And I'll see you in the next video.